Yeah, sorry for the short delay. Delay. Thank you, everybody, for uh, coming today. Today we'll talk about uh, five things about gold. I'll begin with the quick introduction of myself, and uh, then we'll talk about the topic. And of course, we'll have time for questions and answers. So uh, yeah, so I'll begin uh, with uh, myself. Uh, my name is Yichai Lam. I used to be a retail trader. I used to be a computer uh, programmer. Um, and I used to, well, I had to have my own website called Forex Crunch, founded back in 2008, sold it, and working with, with FX Trade already five years now, if I'm not mistaken. My focus is on fundamental analysis, that's what we'll talk now. Um, and I'm leading FX Trade, uh, the premium product. I guess some of you are premium subscribers and you know me from, from there, and some of you aren't, and we uh, hope you'll uh, join us. And uh, yeah, this is what we'll talk about today. I know it's a very popular topic, but just before I begin, I'll do a short uh, pitch. Uh, let me talk just a moment about FX Street uh, Premium. So I think it's a it's a great offering, um, and we have uh, yeah we will, we have 20 years of experience or more backing uh, us up. You'll get to chat with us all day long, access uh, trade alerts, uh, signals. We talk about Forex uh, and also other things. I think it's, a, it's an advantage. Um, oh, I clicked here, just a moment. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is how it looks like our Discord community. Some of you I know are here and are familiar with our community. And uh, yeah, you just get to ask, interact with analysts all day. We accompany you. You're not trading alone. No loneliness if you're with FX Street Premium. You'll get these uh, daily trading alerts and um, signals. We get strategies. We cover economic data events live, so you're always accompanied. Also, when you're trading, you can take advantage of our very highly actionable content. And yeah, and people love us. These are reviews on Trustpilot, not on our our platform. Uh, they say we're amazing. Okay, uh, and they say uh, that it's it's a good service anyway. You can just look up the FX Street Review on Google. You'll get to Trustpilot, a very trusted website. You'll see that we're getting excellent, um, excellent remarks. Okay, so uh, yeah, and um, and today uh, we also have an offer. So it's uh, it's a 50% uh, off. So uh, on your first, uh, sorry, it's 75% off on the first month so it's only ten dollars sorry nine ninety nine for the first month so you have a chance to join premium uh, for a deep discount it's less than ten dollars nine ninety nine you can check it out if you don't like it you can unsubscribe I, I'm sure you'll like it many people uh, do we're growing rapidly and uh, yeah and let me also showcase uh, uh, things we do there so uh, let me begin. Uh, this is our what we'll talk about today. As I said, we'll talk about gold. So it's a safe haven uh, considered, uh, and uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, talk about the more important correlation between gold and yields. Discuss Russia and China, and uh, then move to gold and silver, how or other uh, commodities. And we'll uh, finish with the best times to trade gold. Not every time is right for every asset. Okay. So let's begin. So gold is considered a safe haven. First, when you hear this thing, what does it actually mean? Um, so if we look back at time, it seems uh, it's seen as an ancient form of uh, trade of money. Okay, people were minting gold from the Spanish Empire and the Roman times and, and before that. And back in the 20th century, it would, was tied to currency. So we had the gold standard. So currencies, uh, people were uh, the value of money, of US dollars, of Deutschmarks, of, of British pounds, whatever, was tied to currencies. It also had some issues, of course. So, But people see gold as the number one safe haven. Now, I understand that uh, with uh, uh, it has limited capacity, as you can see here. Um, and, of course, there's a limited amount of gold you can get from the ground. And the gold rush people were looking for gold. But people who made real money were the ones selling shovels. Uh, yeah, gold uh, can be melted, but it cannot be faked, and uh, yeah, it, it sort of lasts forever. Uh, but I understand the appeal. But if you really are really afraid of the Armageddon scenario, 
uh, then you need to have gold in, in your, I mean, physical gold, and really things need to get really, really bad. Okay, so uh, some people see it as the theory goes that it has limited capacity. You can't create gold out of thin air, right? You have to find it in nature, and it serves as a hedge against uh, inflation. So if uh, the price of everything rises, gold is a safe haven. Yeah, but it works as a safe haven only if people believe it's a safe haven. Gold has limited use in, in the real world. I mean, in jewelry for sure, uh, in industry just a bit, but... Uh, I think that if, I mean, a good reason to buy gold as, as a safe haven is only because other people see it as a safe haven. I don't think it is. Uh, it, ha it provides real, a real hedge, real defense against, um, against uh, inflation because, well, we've seen inflation continue to rise and gold falling, so it's not always 100% correlated. And, um, yeah, so the theory has holes in it. Remember 2011, there were lots of gold bugs, the price rose to 1900 and well, uh, then it fell all the way to 1200 uh, even though inflation wasn't beaten, well, inflation was, wasn't really that big, so it's more of a hype. Okay, but hype, you can make money from hype, so uh, I don't think that's a problem. Where I do see a good correlation, where I do see uh, gold... Uh, yeah, I see here a comment that audio is not available. Can everybody hear me? Well, let's assume it's only yes. Okay, so people can hear me. Okay, so uh, what where I do see a correlation is between gold and yields. So U.S. ten-year yields. So if gold is really a safe haven, as people perceive it to be, then it competes with the number one safe haven, U.S. debt, uh, the world's largest economy. Yes, we have the debt ceiling crisis right now. I believe it will be resolved like all the other uh, events. But assuming there are no issues with the U.S. politicians get their act uh, together, then uh, U.S. debt, the world's largest economy, the most liquid asset, and it's the global benchmark, 10-year uh, U.S. treasuries. Okay, So uh, if it, it competes with U.S. debt, 10-year treasuries are the global benchmark, and uh, they provide some kind of a yield. It's 3.7% per year. Gold has no yield. So, uh, I mean, if you buy gold, you can make money if the price goes up. But if it doesn't go up, then you don't get a yearly coupon. Okay? Uh, so, um, it, uh, you, we need for gold to rise, uh, we need uh, uh, yields to fall. So. If U.S. debt doesn't give you the returns you want, if it uh, if the returns fall, then you go for gold. Speculate on something else that is perceived as safe. Okay, but if yields go up because U.S. interest rates go up, then gold uh, struggles to rise. Okay, and we've seen the uh, interest rates rising, and gold. Sure, gold had a nice streak, but you saw that it had the, that triple top there at around. 2075, 2080, and it didn't make it higher despite high inflation. Anyway, talk back to uh, back to uh, 10 years. Uh, something important to know: yes, yields lead and gold follows. So yields go up, gold go, goes down. Yields go down, gold goes up. But it is best pronounced when the moves are big, when we have some kind of an important Fed speech or big data coming out, like uh, CPI or uh, non-farm payrolls, then we see a big move in in um, in gold. When there are little moves of just one basis point in yields, you probably won't see such a reaction in, in gold. But I still see yields as the number one driver of gold prices. Okay, uh, let's continue. Well, this is just another uh, chart. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, this is when things are moving more slowly, this is something to look at. So uh, when gold rises and yields still rise, I mean not the the normal um, not the normal correlation, then you know that gold is strong. So gold is rising despite higher yields. It usually doesn't ha happen when yields jump, but when yields go gradually up and gold still holds its ground, that means there is lots of demand uh, for gold, and gold is strong. So the trend is is a stronger price of gold. And the other way around, when yields fall but gold isn't able to take advantage of it. Uh, then it's a bad sign. It means that gold is weak and that it's better to go short and the next opportunity uh, will be down, not up. Okay, so 
if some of you have been uh, in my talk about identifying currency strength and weakness, this uh, relates to that. It's something we talk about in the premium offering uh, as well. So uh, you can identify when uh, the correlations don't work. You can identify if gold is strong or weak. Okay. Usually this correlation works though. Um, yeah, I hope that's uh, that's uh, clear. Anyway, we'll have questions at, uh, at the end. Uh, let's talk about another topic about Russia. Uh, so I'm going back to the uh, history of the previous war uh, when uh, Russia took uh, Crimea back in 2014. Uh, so before that war, it already uh, Putin, uh, Russia's president took advantage of low gold prices. Again, gold was really weak in 2012 uh, after that uh, big uh, bubble in 2011, uh, and Russia accumulated gold. Then came 2014. Uh, 2014, Russia invaded Crimea, and, uh, and they accelerated their uh, buying of gold. That's, uh, for Russia, it was part of a diversifying away from uh, US dollars, from other assets. But uh, it also helped in, um, in um, well, uh, it helped gold prices. So Russia had an impact. Uh, then we had COVID and lots of speculation, and lots of easy money, and we had uh, 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 prices push even higher. And then in 2022, just when Russia had fully invaded Ukraine, there were, uh, it held some 67 billion worth of, uh, of gold. Okay, so Russia was a major player. But uh, the West seized Russia's assets as part of the sanctions, and um, it could try selling some gold to cover for shortfalls in other, uh, in other exports, such as a uh, ban on oil and things like that. So we might have some downward pressure uh, in the next uh, year or so from Russia trying to sell gold. I see it only as a minor factor. If you're trading gold a lot, I know many of you are, it's something to take into account. Okay. But uh, Russia accumulated a lot of gold. It, it has dollars frozen outside that it can't access. So it might need to sell some gold. And that could be a downside factor on the price, right? But, um, uh, but yeah, take it only as a minor uh, factor. Uh, what about China? Um, well, for Russia, the Chinese Yuan is more interesting uh, because it has much more trade now with China and it needs more yuan than gold. And what Russia really wants is more trade with India. India is sort of uh, playing with both uh, Russia and, um, well, Russia and the West. It's sort of a neutral country. So uh, we might see uh, China also accumulating a bit of gold uh, to diversify away, but they want to push their yuan. Russia needs their yuan. Uh, so uh, Ra uh, China might be a factor in favor of, of gold. Okay. Yeah, let's talk about uh, gold and other uh, commodities. So I know some of you are uh, diversifying away from gold to other assets. So in general, uh, there's a lot of talk about the gold-silver ratio. When it reaches extreme highs, that means when uh, gold is worth proportionally much more than silver, that means uh, we're going to see a uh, move to the other direction. And it's probably a good moment to buy silver. So if you're trading gold, uh, and you look also at gold versus other uh, commodities, silver, which has much more usage, by the way, in, in environmental uh, activities. Uh, so it's then when it reaches an extreme high, when gold goes too high, it might be a good opportunity to buy silver. So that's also something you should know from experience. Well, take from our experience. And oil. Oil, here we are, we don't see lots of correlation. It's usually correlated only around uh, geopolitics. So uh, when you see, well, when Russia invaded Ukraine, that's the best example. We saw gold jumping and also oil jumping, but it had more to do with geopolitics than a real uh, correlation. Okay, so not, not that much of an example. If we have some kind of, uh, uh, I mean, let's say the U.S. defaults on its debt, we'll probably see oil plunging and gold rising, so uh, uh, an inverse correlation. Okay, so be careful with correlations between oil and gold. But what is interesting is that gold is, of course, correlated to companies that mine gold, that take gold, extract gold out of the ground. 
So uh, the precious metal um, uh, is uh, well uh, when when its value rises, then stocks of companies making um, extracting gold also rise. But again, the focus is shifting to other uh, commodities such as uh, cobalt and palladium used for um, green um, renewable energy and also copper. Copper is used in, uh, there is four times more copper in, uh, in electric cars than in uh, regular cars. So there is much more demand for copper. Again, silver is used for uh, environmental technologies much more than uh, you'll see in uh, in uh, in gold gold is mostly speculative okay uh so i think i've run a, a very fast on everything we talked about but maybe um this opportunity for those looking for the most actionable stuff to find to find what they're looking for so timing one thing you should take into account is the indian uh, wedding season uh, there are some dates According to Indian tradition, when uh, when weddings are, are have better uh, luck, when weddings are held, and towards these dates, there is accumulation of gold because tradition in India is to buy gold as um, as gifts to the bride and groom. Again, speculation is the number one factor impacting gold, but this is something you can take into account. So, like in other markets, you have the buying the accumulation before these wedding dates. You can look up these wedding dates on Google. Uh, but then you have the sell the fact after these dates or to even on the day of these uh, wedding dates the prices fall so markets move fast you shouldn't wait for a week to pass after those wedding dates to to sell gold if you I mean if you try to play on on these factors uh, more importantly uh, what a seasonal thing to take into account is gold tends to fall in the autumn with the leaves so autumn, referring to uh, autumn in the um, northern hemisphere, it means the months of October, November, December even, perhaps even September. So the latter part of the year is uh, where gold, when gold falls, usually correlated during this season, not all year, with stocks and, um, and, uh, and oil. So there is this old saying in markets, sell in May and go away. Uh, well, so far this May, stocks are going up. Uh, gold is falling, uh, but gold, uh, I mean, it, the, the pattern that repeats itself more and more is that uh, gold falls in the autumn. But then, of course, it recovers afterwards, so in the beginning of the year, uh, it's a better season to buy gold. And in terms of days of the week, it's a U-shaped. Uh, there is demand for gold. Demand is higher on uh, Mondays, and then uh, it... Uh, finds the low prices tend to fall on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and then they rise on Thursday and Friday. I don't have a very good explanation of why that happens but this is a pattern that repeats itself and as traders we should follow we should follow the trends. It doesn't happen every week it's uh, uh, if we would have fixed patterns that would work that would always work uh, we would all be rich uh, but uh, but if we were would all follow them, they wouldn't work anymore, right? Uh, because uh, because everybody would be expecting them. But this is something that tends to repeat itself. Something you can take it to account. So it's a U-shaped week, beginning high, falling, and then rising once again. Um, yeah, and of course the timings. So this is where my fundamental hat uh, is put on. Events move markets. You want to know why prices move? It's fundamentals. Uh, you know, you want to know when to enter and when to exit technicals, okay? So big moves happen around big events. Um, no difference between gold and regular currencies. So uh, when we have, uh, let's say, well, today we have the S&P Global, uh, S &P Global uh, PMIs, preliminary PMIs for the U.S. If they're very strong, it shows that there's a higher chance of a rate hike from from the Federal Reserve, that means higher yields, that means weakness in gold. If they fall a lot, uh, if the PMIs are very weak, it means that uh, we're going to have uh, lower chances of more rate hikes, yields fall, and gold benefits. PMIs have a small impact, but they will have an impact. 
Uh, bigger impact is non-farm payrolls, and the number one market mover, sorry, non-farm payrolls, is CPI. Consumer price index released in the middle of the month, the middle of the week usually, has a massive impact. The higher it goes, the worse for gold, the lower it goes, the better for gold. Now, in some cases, investors, traders are only waiting for the data release to make a move. So sometimes we can see lots of price action just after the release, regardless of the figure. So we're expecting the figure to come out at a certain point, and that's what happens, exactly as expected. No surprises. Supposedly no drama. No, no, no. Uh, money was held back before, and it explodes once, um, once the release is out. So um, even if you're looking only at technicals, you're looking, you say everything is in the price, you should still at least know when these figures are released. This is relevant for gold, relevant for other currencies as well. Okay. And we have also big uh, price action around the openings. So this is the time of the Tokyo Open, midnight GMT. Uh, London opens at 7 GMT and New York at uh, 12 GMT. Th these are summertime uh, numbers. So in the winter time, winter here in the northern hemisphere, I mean, I mean in Europe and and in the U.S., it will be eight in GMT in London and uh, one p.m. GMT in New York. But as most of the year we have summertime, then we're talking about seven GMT in London and twelve in, in New York. That's when we have a little bit more movement. So if you hate volatility, <laughs> this is not your time uh, to trade. But if you like it, this is exactly your time. Uh, to trade and gold is no different than other assets. Uh, people get excited towards the open, then there's price action, then things uh, slow down afterwards in terms of volatility. Okay, that's uh, what I've prepared uh, for you. Um, I spoke a bit fast, I know, um, uh, but now we have uh, time for questions and answers. For anything that I talked about too fast or anything you want me to talk about, uh, you're welcome to ask questions about gold and questions about anything else. Take advantage of our time here. And um, yeah, I'll take the uh, opportunity to remind you that we have a special offer in our uh, premium section. People love what we do. You get, you get lots of useful information. And we have uh, first month basically uh, almost free so you can test it uh, you can just use the link i'm showing here uh, it'll lead you to our landing page you can uh, read again everything we have to offer and you can join us yeah where is the strong support for gold nowadays um yeah where's strong support so let's look look at the chart um Hope you can continue uh, seeing my screen. I move to. I'm moving to another. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Yes, that's the trading studio, also part of our premium offering. But we want you want to know about the charts. So here we go. Yeah, uh, in the meantime, can you repeat what you said about PMA, PMI data? In general, strong data means higher yields, and that means weaker gold. And if we get weaker data, it means uh, falling gear yields, stronger gold. Uh, so that's, that's the basic thing. So looking at the price now, I see strong support here at... 1952, 1952, followed by 1933, 1907, and 1885. Uh, resistance, uh, strong resistance, 1984, 2000, double bottom, former double bottom, and also a uh, round number. Then 2022, 2036, and well, 2048. So these are the current lines uh, of gold. Um, yeah, uh, can we get your slides? Yeah, uh, I'll share the slides with everybody on the premium section. I'll just send it out as a PDF. Um, yeah, so I answered the question about uh, support and resistance, PMI. Um, why when USD currency goes stronger, the other currency than gold loses value? 
yeah, because uh, basically it's it's in many cases the US dollar against all the rest okay so um, that's why we get um, uh, gold is, is part of all the rest and the reason is that gold has no yield so if it competes as a safe haven asset it needs to um, uh, I mean when yields are higher in the US um, it's more attractive to buy US debt uh, than than gold when yields fall then gold suddenly becomes more attractive hope that answers your question it talks about BRICS nations are trying to introduce currency pegged to gold what is your opinion about that uh, yeah but the, the the BRICS countries are Brazil Russia China India and South Africa so yeah, they're not big fans of uh, the U.S. Uh, yeah, well, dominance of the world and hegemony, and um, they would prefer uh, another currency. I don't think gold will be would be their best in their best interests because there is also experience, bad experience from the 1930s in Europe with countries that had the gold standard and got stuck in a bad uh, deflation spiral. So it's not not such a good idea. I think they would either need to agree on one currency to lead. They would need to agree on open markets. Uh, the, maybe the yuan is the Chinese yuan would be the biggest currency. I don't see them coalescing around gold. South Africa, there's gold in South Africa, but it's a smaller country, so South Africa would have more interest. So I, I don't think they would ever reach an agreement about that. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll repeat. I see your question about, again, to repeat about inflation uh, yields and gold. So, yeah, basically, US 10 year yields, we can look at them here. Um, you, I hope you can see my chart. So, uh, we can see uh, US uh, 10 year yields rising, actually. This is a daily chart. So, they've been rising one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight days in a row. So, um, yeah. Uh, so we have uh, eight days in a row of, of rising um, yields, and that's why we're seeing quite a few days in a row of, of falling uh, gold prices. Basically, uh, if inflation is high, then uh, the Federal Reserve needs to raise rates. When rates raise or when inflation seems to be out of control, then we have uh, yields rising because we expect long-term interest rates, long-term yields to be higher. And if you can get a higher yield on something uh, that is safe, why would you uh, why would you buy gold that has no yield? I see a question here also about uh, the debt ceiling issues resolved. I think markets are pricing in that the debt ceiling issue will be resolved. Um, basically, I think yields would fall a bit and gold would strengthen a bit, but not not a major thing. Why do I say I think it's priced in? Look at the price of stocks. You can see the S&P 500, very stable at 4,188. As we speak, the futures, just under 2,000, uh, four, uh, sorry, 4,200. Stocks are not falling at all, despite the debt ceiling issue. So markets believe that it will be resolved. If the U.S. defaults on its debt, yeah, stocks will fall 10, 20% easily. So I think, uh, the same goes for gold. We will not see a big impact if it's resolved because people believe it will be resolved. But if there will be a, an impact, it will be falling yields and a bit, uh, gold rising. What is the next lower level of gold as on Friday speech? You say is like uh, opposite scene. Yeah, um, yeah. The U.S. dollar is strengthening for several reasons. We have a bit of fears about the debt ceiling issue. It strengthens the U.S. dollar as a safe haven asset. Perhaps it sounds a bit counterintuitive, but that's the way it works. Secondly, we had uh, a few hawkish speeches by Federal Reserve officials. So we had Kashkari, which used to be a dove, and now he's an extreme hawk. We had James Bullard, always a hawk. We had also Mary Daly, which is close to Fed Chair Powell, all talking about raising rates. And we got the impression from the last Fed decision that the Fed is done. No more rate hikes, right? So it's not over yet. We had a few pieces of strong data. We had jobless claims falling. Uh, we had um, uh, CPI going down, but not so fast. Very strong jobs report. Um, so I, 
What will the Fed do in June? It depends on two major releases, not only the latest figures, not only today's PMIs. It depends mostly on non-farm payrolls uh, on Friday next week and, um, and CPI, uh, which comes in the following week, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so these are the main factors that could decide if we'll have a rate, decision, a rate hike in, in June, 25 basis points, or not. I still believe the Fed will prefer not to raise rates because the economy is slowing down. But even if they don't raise rates, they leave the door open to uh, raising them in the future. Australia uh, stopped, they paused the rate hikes, but then uh, resumed them once again. So even if a pause doesn't mean a halt, and in any case, the Fed intends to leave interest rates high, uh, despite Powell's speech, well, sorry, Powell uh, hinted he'll leave rates unchanged, uh, but he still intends to leave them very high. So um, yeah, and markets are pricing in rate cuts. That's why the US uh, dollar index, the dollar is strong. Uh, how optimistic can one be that the debt ceiling will pass? I'm optimistic because it will be a catastrophe if the world's largest economy is unable to pay its debt because of some stupidity in, in the law. Uh, remember, uh, there's, uh, I mean, Congress already approved spending, but it also has this law about the debt ceiling. So why does it need to approve uh, a budget twice? And uh, anyway, um, if faith is lost in the most and the safest asset, then there's a problem. Uh, another thing also, and Republicans will not want to be responsible, uh, nor Democrats, for uh, for such an economic disaster. Democrats have weird tools, uh, gimmicks. They can uh, announce a one uh, trillion uh, platinum coin and do other tricks or, or say, OK, well, Congress already approved these budgets and other and there's a um, clause in the Constitution which says that the U.S. must respect its debt. Anyway, they have some tricks to bypass the debt ceiling. I don't think it'll, I think they'll reach a deal eventually. But, uh, yeah, uh, look, well, it never happened in the past. So <laughs> now your broker will tell you that past performance is, does not guarantee future uh, gains. But uh, I think it'll, it's going to be such a disaster that they'll avoid it. Yeah, so I hope that answers that question as well. Um, and any more, uh, you go back to my slides, remind you, we have this uh, special offer, uh, just for today. If you take advantage of this offer, you'll get one month for only $9.99. Let me share the link again. Uh, I can use this link to sign up. Uh, yeah. Any more questions? I'll be glad to. Yes, we have more questions. Uh, do you think it's going to drop below 1952? Yes, uh, I think so. Um, yeah. Uh, so yes, I think I think it'll come under gold will come under further pressure. In 1933 and 1907 are the next lines to watch. Uh, I think today we'll get. Uh, we'll get a bit of more and more pressure on gold. And we're not very far from 1952, so I see it falling. And I wish I joined late. How can I get the previous minutes? Well, uh, for premium members, I'll be sharing the slides, the slideshow uh, on, the, on our Ask Our Analysts uh, channel uh, or on another channel, but I'll let everybody know so you won't miss it. Uh, but and another thing you can do if you joined late is uh, I think tomorrow we'll have a recording of this webinar available as well. But uh, so you can watch everything once again. How can I get premium 999? Yeah, uh, it's uh, this one month offer is available by using the link I just shared. So just use it, sign up, and the first month is is well uh, almost free. Uh, can I get the conclusion now? Which conclusion? Sorry. Uh, I mean, I'll share a um, PDF with premium members um, shortly after I finish this webinar, and you'll have you'll be able to see a recording of what you're watching now. Uh, usually, yeah, it should be available tomorrow. So tomorrow is uh, Wednesday, the twenty fourth. For those of you watching the recording, it's been recorded on Tuesday, uh, May twenty third.
Yeah. So, um, any more uh, questions? I'll be glad to uh, be glad to answer. But if uh, there is one thing you should take. Um, From, from this webinar is that gold and yields are highly correlated, inversely correlated, yields up, gold down, and yields down, gold up. And the stronger the move, the stronger the correlation. Uh, will gold reach 2049 again due to debt ceiling? I don't think so. Uh, I think uh, debt ceiling issue will be resolved. It'll help gold rise, but not all the way up to 2049. It's quite a long way. Uh, remember that ceiling at the deadline is next week or the following one depends on the tricks of the treasury there. I don't think there's room to rise. Remember the Fed also is keen on raising rates. So um, at least until non-farm payrolls, I don't see I don't see 2049. We'll have to have weak non-farm payrolls to send it higher. Um, which indicators? Ah. Um, you prefer you buy and sell gold signals uh, for uh, uh, yeah uh, well in general I'm a fan of uh, well just simple support and resistance lines if we have if we have a break with momentum of a significant line then it's a and it's a sign that there's strong momentum and there's room to go go with the trend currently the trend is to the downside and gold, at least in the medium term. And um, yeah, I also like the RSI, four hour RSI. So if it goes extreme above 70, that means uh, the asset is overbought. And then there is a sell opportunity. And if it goes under 30, uh, that means it's oversold and there is a buy opportunity. Okay, but preferably you'll go with the trend and not against the trend. Because um, it can, you can make money on the counter trend, of course, but uh, there's, yeah, uh, easier to bet with the wind than against the wind. So, yeah. And ah, I missed a question before entry entry for gold today. Uh, let's let me look at the chart once again. If you. Sorry, I clicked the wrong thing. Try to find the right thing. Gold. Hmm. Well, uh, somewhere just under. 1952. I see support 952, so a bit below it, I guess, would be a good point to sell. And I mean, sell low and, and cover even lower. And I see resistance at 1984. So if we see a break above that level, uh, I see that as uh, essential. At, at this moment in time, the gold is falling. And it's not oversold, so I see the trend is, is going down. Um, do you find fib retracements good and helpful for gold? Um, I'm not a big believer in Fibonacci retracements. I prefer Fibonacci extensions. So if we have at some point a big breakout, I'm talking about here the daily chart. If we have a big breakout above um, above uh, 2075, then I would use Fibonacci extensions of the most recent move towards that level uh, to, uh, I mean, the 138.2. Uh, the 161.8 percent; those kind of extensions are useful, but retracements I'm not not a big fan. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, if you want to tap into more of our knowledge. Um, if you want to get signals, if you want uh, other stuff, other webinars that aren't open like this one, and lots of other goodies, 
if you want to be accompanied in your trading journey, not to trade alone, uh, to have analysts you can tap into, and also other people, like-minded people uh, like you that are already in the service, then do join us in our service. Uh, today, again, we have first month uh, only for $9.99, so there's really not a lot to lose. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so the question to how to join the service is just to link on the on the link over there. Uh, pivot point, I'm not a big fan. Uh, thank you for the kind words. How do I follow my analysis? You join the premium uh, section, and uh, you'll be able to uh, see my analysis there, ask me questions. And it's not only me, we're, we're a growing team of experts, so everybody can, can help you around. And we've recently, um, yeah, well, uh, we've recently expanded our hours, so we're available until later in the U.S. session. So if you prefer trading, uh, well, late European afternoon or evening, or up to midday in the U.S., uh, we'll be there for you, and we're all the time uh, developing the product, uh, adding more features, and listening to our users. So, yeah, and in any case, it's just... It's just $9.99 for the first month. I think a month is, is quite enough time to understand. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so in Zambia, when, uh, well, if you just um, click on the link, you'll see, uh, you'll see uh, what, um, you'll, ha you'll see a counter there until the offer ends. I think it ends uh, tomorrow at uh, 8 GMT. So in Zambia, if I'm not mistaken, that would be either, well, uh, why wait for tomorrow morning? If you, if you like the offer, go for it right now. Uh, don't wait until the last minute. You can cancel any time, 9.99. You can see what we offer if you like it. We'll be happy to, to attend you. If you don't, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be sorry that you leave, but again, nothing to lose. How late into the session are the analysts available? So, yeah, we're available until, at this time, until 5 GMT, so that would be uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we intend to expand it uh, just when we can. We're trying, I mean, we want to offer extended hours, but maintain the high quality of service, so we need to do it uh, correctly. So, yeah, we used to close this session at um, 2.30 GMT, and we added two and a half more hours. So, uh, all for you guys. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll expand it even more. So if you're uh, if you like trading in these hours, whether you're from the U.S. or from any other part of the world, uh, I think uh, yeah yeah now now our offer is is more attractive. So uh, I hope that answers uh, your question. And everybody else's, I think it's a great offer. And people like you are already in our service. Uh, getting help, being accompanied, and um, and they find value again. If you if you just, I mean, I won't share the link. <laughs> it, it's easier if you just find it by yourself. You click FX Street Review on on uh, on Google, and the first link you'll reach is Trust Pilot, and you'll see our rating is excellent. And you can also read the commentary about the premium service, about our analysis. So, uh, yeah, and the proof is, is there. Uh, yeah, okay. So I guess uh, it's time to conclude. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming here uh, today. It's been uh, great talking about gold. I know it's a very popular asset, and we talk about gold while we start with it first thing in the morning. We get lots of questions, and um, we talk about that a lot. So, um, yeah, again, uh, thank you very much for coming. I hope you learned something new. The recording will be available. And again, if you want to continue tapping into our service, uh, join the premium section, also share the PDF of this presentation over there as well. Okay, yeah, thank you very much for your very kind uh, comments, uh, either private or uh, public. I can see a few private ones as well. And uh, yeah, I'll share the link once again. Hope I'm not too annoying, but here you go if you want to join Premium. And yeah, I hope to see you soon in any of the webinars or any other activities. So that's it for me for today. So thank you very much. 
everybody and see you soon. Bye-bye.